Hello friends and fans, welcome to Epic Cycles. Today, we're going to be unboxing the brand new Suron Ultra B. thing we're going to do is going to cut off the straps so your bike your box will arrive very much as you see here it'll be all carefully wrapped and strapped down we're just going to remove all these fiberglass straps all right we're ready for the big uh, reveal let's buy a box of goodies here All right. All right, there's the first step. That's a Boy, season. she's a beauty. Yeah, easier than uh, Storm B, actually. Was, yeah, no that, metal that, cage that, on that this one. That one was uh, pretty tough. It was. Yeah. All right. Let's take off some of this plastic. Reveal some of the goody goodies. Got the lithium charger right here if you want to take a look. So right, your box can... will arrive like this. We've taken a few things off already on top of here. Your charger will arrive on the very top of the bike. As well as, uh, looks like the handlebars as well here. Mm -hmm. Put that aside for a moment. I'm just gonna very carefully. There's another box of goodies. Oh, you remove that. And just, this it side. wants to be tethered down, so I'm just gonna snip this. Has a little bit of more freedom of movement. This guy. No, she's looking better already. We're gonna show all show off all the loveliness of this bike now. Let's get her all out of here. Oh, I need a cutter. Front fender. So our front fender is gonna be strapped on to the rear tire. We got the axle, so this wood block very similar as to how they packaged the light BX as well. So we're gonna need to pry that one out, I guess, and as well uh, strapped, strapped in. So I guess we can loosen that now. Let's see the suspension moving up already. Here's the keys, zip tied to the front brake cables. So, uh, we need to get some things started. There's a couple of packaging straps. We removed the fork strap already to let the fork relax. Then on the rear of the bike. Oh, like that rear suspension is coming alive, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I won't be able to do the next step without undoing the front. So you will need probably a socket tool an eight millimeter socket or a wrench to undo the fork clamp. So the fork retaining clamp is over here. It's holding the holding it by the front axle, which is already installed just for support. And when you get a little noisy here. In this instance, I chose to use a power tool. And that's a couple couple million spins on the on the threads there to get those off we'll take that Oop, that'll just lift right out okay this is where we want to be I will need some assistance from Barry to lift mm -hmm. up the front end while I put under or put in the fork or the bike jack mm -hmm. so if from the oh. front end if you can sort of lift and support it all right let's do that we'll get this under the crankcase That's good. Alrighty. You may not have one of these at home. 
one of these uh, jacks at home. But if you do, they're really handy to have and they're also great for servicing your motorcycle in the future or your bicycle. Now I'm just gonna let her raise up. This is not a very powerful tool. This one takes a lot of torque. We've got a sticky thread here. I am going to do it the old fashioned way. We're going to get ourselves a wrench. In the meantime, I'm going to open up this uh, packaging here as well. It's, uh, the brakes are encased in here inside this uh, cardboard. Ready. And open. Got our two brake levers. Open that up as well. All right, that's looking like it might be high enough to mount the front wheel now. Got your dot fluid. So big upgrade from the LBXs. Nice. Motorcycle Very nice. grade, right? What do we have here? Another brake lever. Mm -hmm. Looks like we got one of the controls here. So you may take this bike apart in any way you wish to go about it, as long as you are careful not to damage anything. So don't go slicing and dicing away with a hack knife. There we go. She's all loose. Let's get rid of some of this foam out of the way. So we're going to reveal the KKE forks that come standard on this bike. We you see some large forks, nice robust fork legs protectors on the lowers of the legs. Hey, why not? Let's just reveal the bar too while we're here. So at this stage, you can do a couple of different things as you assemble. What I'm going to do right now, I'm just going to loosely set up the handlebars just to have everything approximately in position. I'm going to mount the front wheel, actually mount the front fender because it's easier to put the fender on before the wheel. Then the wheel's going to go on. We're going to lift this off and it's going to look very much like a motorcycle at this point. So I'm about to switch to a couple more tools. I'm going to bring a few tools over and I'm also going to bring a little bit of grease over. So we're going to take off the handlebar clamps. Going to spin these guys off. The stainless steel hardware is a nice touch. That'll help from uh, corroding in the future, keeping your bike looking very beautiful, having a nice finish. No one likes to see that custom brown anodizing show up. On my last video, I may not have greased the threads, but typically, well, I think every, you did. every, you did you I? yeah, you greased every single oh, one. Good. All right. <laughs> So again, we just want to wet the threads. We, you know, we're not lubing this like a like a like a bearing. So just a little dab of grease on each thread. Oops, put that back in there. The bar, actually, because this cable has only so much length, what I am going to do is I am going to put the controls on first making sure they're in the right location so you can see we have letters here if you put it on this way it's going to be upside down you're going to have to start your process all over again oh we got something sticking you'll see a thread or a bear uh, a bolt it's just sticking out a little bit so we're just going to want to recess that bolt a tiny bit all the tools that we will be using are metric allen keys 
in this case. So I'm using, looks like a 2.5 mil. I'm just going to sink that bolt back or that screw back just so it's flush with the, with the ring. Now I can slip this on, making sure it's oriented correctly. Whoops, I do. That's upside down. You don't want to do that. Let's flip her over. Can I look over the bar? Give yeah, me a little bit. I'm not going to go that way. Oh, I okay. see. Oh, all right. Well, tight, it's, tight. she's so, tight. So this is a yeah. good idea to do this early. So let me just see where I have slack. Hmm. So what should I do? Should I loosen off the other side? Or will there just be enough slack? I don't want to force there anything. Go. There yeah. we go. Yeah. So if a little, anything, little bit of a tight squeeze, but you can get it. Yeah. If anything feels like you're going to be pulling too hard, you may want to loosen the opposite side to give yourself some more maneuverability. All right, now we can seat the bar. So I'm just going to drop it in, in, in the saddle. These clamps are ambidextrous. doesn't matter whether they're upside down, left or right. I'm just going to pilot the thread to begin with. I will be doing this mostly with hand tools. You may have power tools. If you do, make sure that the torque settings aren't set. Well, don't set your drill or your, your tool into, into drill mode. You would like a torque setting on it. I would start with low settings and then finally torque everything down. There is a torque rating list, I believe, in the manual. And if it's not, Suron is very specific on their, on their builds. So you'd be able to find it online. Now you will see little tiny marks on the handlebar, giving you an indication when your bar is centered. So I'm just going to eyeball. There's two notches there. Two notches on the other side and I got a little bit too much tension on this bolt to rotate the bar so I'm just going to spin that back off a tiny bit. All right I'm just seeing the second line that looks good. Yeah I think you want that Suron logo to be right in the middle right? You do. Cool. Now the bar is back sweep that's a personal choice I like it at what I would call a neutral position where the flats of the bars are, are flat to the ground and riders may have a personal touch but we start off every build so that they all look the same giving a nice consistent look to everything that we build here and as you can see i'm not giving a ton of torque on this yet we also want to make sure that these bolts are tightened equally on both sides we don't want one gap pinched and the other gap wide open we'd like this to go down nice and flat all right there's that part the next stage, we're going to do the front fender. I'm going to leave the brake levers for the last because there's a clamp on them and they're not really important at this stage to do. Yeah, while you're while you're setting that up, I'm going to just release the pegs here and the whoa flies. Be careful there. <laughs> so the pegs do spring. Let's see. Watch this. There you go. It looks great. Look at that. It's a beauty. Okay, coming around to the front end, we're gonna do the fender. So underneath the front of the, the crown here, we got four bolts and they're already installed. So I'm just gonna loosen them off with the wrench and spin them off by hand. So I'm gonna loosen these off with a wrench. A 10 millimeter wrench is what we're gonna use. This one has to be a combination with a ratcheting mechanism on it. And then I'm just gonna spin these bolts back out. These seem to be going in nice and smooth. I love the threading on here. Suron does a great job on their machining. Everything torques down nicely. And just like the, everything else that I've done, especially on a zinc plated bolt, I will be putting a tiny bit of grease on each one of those threads again. So I got my handy dandy grease gun and we just put a little shot just to wet threads. That looks great. 
Next. The fender. So now we're gonna be ready to install the fender. So on the fender, we're gonna have four bolts that hold it into place. Bolts that will have a hat shaped washer and that was gonna go inside of this hole, kind of like that, which will, which will fit nicely in the hole and the wideness of the washer will give more support around the, the, around the fender just to resist cracking and breaking and a more structural sound, soundness. And there was a little bit of difficulty on our first effort. So as a little tech tip, I'm gonna put just a tiny drop of grease on the fender itself, not to lubricate anything, but to act as a Adhesive. temporary bonding agent. <laughs> so just to help this washer sort of stay in place. Because when you're moving it around underneath the crown there, she's gonna wanna, these washers are gonna wanna jump out. So these just make it more secure. For the next stage, I'm gonna prep the bolts with the hat shaped part of the, the narrow part of the washer at the top. Put all four of them all ready for installation. Now with very, very steady hands, you're gonna wanna lift this into place, mock it into a location, take one of your bolts, gently push it through, find the threaded hole that we've pre-lubed, and just a couple of threads. And again, when you put the next bolts in, be mindful not to knock the washer back out That'd in case it slipped around. And just a couple of threads. That looks good, Barry. Yep. And now the last one. There we go, washer stayed in place. And there we go. So now they're all in place. You can just, because of the fineness of the threads, it takes very little effort to spin them all the way down to the bottom. That's really nice. Kudos to Suron for the fine machining. And being, this being plastic, you don't need to put a ton of torque on it. So we're just gonna take our wrench Snug up the bolts. If you had a socket wrench, that might be a little bit easier. And there's one snug. And you can see by the effort that I'm putting into it, I'm, I'm not putting my arm right into that to torque it down. You just want to make sure it's just snug enough. It's going to stay. And the bolts are pre-lubed so that in the future, when you break your first fender, It'll be easy to reinstall a new one. And my rule is, if you don't break anything, you haven't had enough fun with your bike yet. All right, that's looking good. Next stage, we're gonna remove the axle to prepare the front wheel to go into place. So, we got a five millimeter Allen key. We're just gonna loosen off the clamp bolts. They even put witness marks on these clamp bolts. Not sure if they'll actually be relevant in this build, but the witness marks that are on every other part of the bike that is assembled at the factory are, are set to the torque settings that are required by the specifications of the bike. We're gonna undo this, this uh, cap nut here that sort of pinches in the axle that'll allow us to slide the axle out. Put the eight in there, eight fits. That's the one we're gonna use today. You can spin off that cap nut or cap bolt. Now we can slide the axle through. And on the axle, you'll see the wheel spacers. There's a specific way we want to install them when the wheels go in. Just gonna put them down for now. We won't need this anymore. That could be firewood, kindling for the cottage. So there's another axle spacer on the other side. It looks like the axle spacers are the same size, so it won't matter whether they're left or right, but the one thing you'll want to make sure is that the flange is going to be towards the inside or towards the bearings of the wheel. So, our wheel. 
There's one box that we haven't opened yet. Houses our wheel. Again, very carefully packaged. Disc brake protector. Nice, robust, large disc brake. Very thick, very strong. And would appear that the tires are also much larger in section too. So some of you moto, moto guys are gonna appreciate that. So putting these spacers in, it's pretty straightforward. Again, the flange going towards the inside, there's a lip seal that is a wiper to keep dirt from getting in. I'm just gonna rotate that in. That's one side in. Spin the wheel around to give you another view. Flange towards the bearing. I'm gonna rotate that in. If you drop it on the floor and there's dirt or grit on it, wipe these down. You don't wanna introduce dirt into these bearings when they're brand new. So before we can put the wheel on, we're gonna find a little disc brake protector here. And this is on bicycles. It's on pretty much anything with hydraulics. It's to protect the, the brakes from being pumped in transport. So we remove that piece there. You might wanna save that in the future if you're doing service or taking your wheel off. You can put that back in place. If you don't have it, a piece of cardboard is pretty handy just to take up that gap where the disc brake would be. Here we go, we're gonna install this axle. It feels a little bit greasy, so I'm pretty happy with that. I don't need to add more grease or lube to it. I'm gonna very carefully raise the wheel into place. We put the brake rotor into the, into the brake caliper. I'm gonna get one side in. Sometimes this can be a little bit tricky. There we go. When it knocks, it's sort of hitting the other bearing. A little bit of wiggle and jiggle. So lining that up is a bit of a trick. So we're just lining that up so that it slides into the fork. Bingo, yeah, she's it. in. Yeah. And again, same practice. I'm gonna put a little dab of grease on that. You could also use anti-seize. Yeah, grease. Ah, thank you, Barry. So again, you don't have to really soak it, just a little bit. Give it a bit of a wipe, spread that stuff around. Put that into the end of the axle. With the fork bolts still loose, we're gonna torque down this bolt. And what that's gonna do is gonna pinch the fork legs together, taking up that little bit of space that we're seeing right there on each side of the spacers. We don't need to crush this wheel into place, it's just adjusted. So you'll see now, it's, now the gap is taken up and I'm just using the finger, my fingertip here just to pull up on it. I'm not cranking on it like as if it's a, the wheels on an 18 wheeler. So now she's tight. And the final thing, we're gonna tighten those five millimeter pinch bolts on the bottom of the fork. And this installation of the wheel will be complete. It's all compressing together. And we just wanna, you know what, hear that sound? That's a reminder to me that I didn't pre, pre lube the bolts. Well, I'm just gonna reverse this process. And you can even hear a bit of squeaking going on. So we're gonna get rid of that mouse to make this bike nice and silent and make it a quality build. So I'm gonna do that to the other side too. Spin those guys out. Take your time. It's one rule I have in life. The long way is the fast way and the hard way is the easy way. There's no such thing as a shortcut. I can always catch up to you later. So now I can take my grease gun once again and I'm just gonna put a little bit of grease on that thread. That looks good. That looks good. And because my hands are greasy, I'm making sure that I don't touch the, the rotor of the brake. We don't want to contaminate that. Brakes really don't need grease to lubricate them to make whoops. <laughs> they don't need grease on the brakes to make them work better. And we're going to spin these guys down. Look at that, the squeak is all gone too. 
And that's actually not a bad thread. It's not complaining at all. And now I can torque them down a little bit. So the same procedure as I did before. A little bit of torque on one. A little bit of torque on the other. And then back it up. Double check. She's good. Other side. A little bit of torque. We got a little bit less space to work with here. I had a quick question for you with the, the witness marks that you are mentioning before. Do they, uh, when you're tightening it, does not, does not have to line up with it? I don't think so, but because these, because this is not really assembled at the factory, but you will see a witness mark here, and I'm about at nine nine o'clock to this one. Yeah. Let me just see what happens when I take it to twelve. It doesn't feel like I put too much torque on it, so I think, I think maybe they may have pre-torqued them at the factory. Now here's a witness mark, and I'm going past it. It's at twelve and twelve, but here I go a little bit more. So I'm at like 12 and 4, so it's about 4 o'clock. So I'm going to say these bolts here aren't actually the true torque rating with the witness marks on this one. And you can see by the effort I'm putting in, it's just to clamp that fork down. Now she's ready. Yeah. Oh, I got the, you know what? The brake levers. Brake levers. Yeah. Oh. Before we put the bike on the floor, mm -hmm. we're going to put these brake levers on. So on our brake levers, we got eight millimeter bolts on the clamps and these are a little bit sticky and you can hear that squeaky squeak going on there. So we're going to give this a royal treatment as well. So off with the clamp, I'm just going to put that on the seat for now. And I will need an eight millimeter wrench. I'm not going to take it off all the way. It's enough to get through the bars, I believe. Right? Or not? Let's see. Yeah. So that one, that's a good location for that. Mm -hmm. And I think on this one, we're going to go very much with the same locale. I guess I got to take it off, huh? Bolt all the way? Yeah, you take the bolt off. Well, yeah. we're going to put some grease on those bolts too. Okay. You can hear a little bit of squeaking going on. Yeah. So same old deal. Little shot of grease. Little shot of grease. There's a bolt. Get the other one I dropped. And. You want to put it inside maybe, right? Yeah, that's good for now. Little shot of grease in the thread. There we go. Mm -hmm. There's one ready to go for you. Now these clamps do have a little arrow saying what side is up. So you'll see a little arrow and it's stamped in there. It says up. Okay. Thank you for that tip because I was doing it backwards. <laughs> so we're going to put the, uh, the brake lever clamps on once again. You'll have little indicators with an arrow saying what's up and what's down. It doesn't say left or right, so if you mix them up, I think you're safe. And I don't see exactly why they need to be up or down, but we'll follow the directions because they look like they're very similar in their design on both sides. So we just put this into place. Give it a couple of turns, priming the thread. Oops, I'm not even in. Let's rotate that lever. So, I recommend, like I say, starting everything by hand. If you're using power tools, they're pretty good at stripping something down. I'm going to need to change this brake, sorry, this wrench to an 8 millimeter wrench. Yes, yeah, so I'm just hand tightening this right now as much as I can. Now we're going to give it a torque with that eight millimeter wrench that Paul's bringing here. So 
I'm just getting it down just long, just tight enough that I can still move the lever around because uh -huh. I'm going to want to reposition or position everything so that everything works nicely and nothing is getting in each other's way. All right, so that's a closed gap. I see that they added that the gap a bit. Lever guards, it looks like, right? Lever guards are going to be in one of the boxes. Yes, so we will have oh, okay, this, okay, a, got it, yeah. a little bit of decoration going on the bike yeah. next. So the first thing I'm going to do is now that everything's kind of loose, we can sort of set up our bar position. And some of it's kind of personal. I'm going to sort of guess right now. I'm just going to tighten first the throttle into place. And you're going to hear it's bottoming out on the end of the bar. I'll put our Allen key in here. Apply a little bit of torque on both sides. And as well, at this point, you might want to connect your uh, brake inhibitors. That's uh, these wires you'll find sticking out here, and that connects right into the levers right there. If you yeah, two tabs on the lever. Got two tabs, so we're just going to get that in. There's one. So what this does, when you hit the brakes, it'll stop your motor instantly, cut it off for safety. Okay, I am going to admit to a mistake I made, so I'm going to go back to something. There I go. <laughs> Don't say mistake. Just I oh, no. cut the. Fire. It's okay. No, no, no. We're going to okay. show this. It's, we're going to show, show. show this. It's important to show it that way because so the mistake that I just made. It's actually not a big mistake, but remember what I said about orienting this so that it's vertical. Well, I kind of did. But then I'm noticing a couple of things here. We got some letters on this side as well. So what ended up happening, if I end up sticking this all together, these controls are going to be over the front end of the bike where we don't want it to be. So I'm just going to take this back off again. So the throttle is going to come off. And I'm curious to know really how this is all going to work out. Ah, I've already tightened the bar down. Well. Slow way is the fast way. Let's undo all of this stuff now. I might be able to do it. And again, I really don't like shortcuts, but if it behaves, I will. If it doesn't, I'm taking these off because I don't want to scratch the bar and damage any hardware. So I'm going to try to slide the bar over, see if that gives me enough room. No, it doesn't. So the hard way becomes the easy way once again. So we're going to reverse something that we did earlier. We're going to take this clamp off. Try just one side. We're going to we're going to try doing one side first. See if that gives us the gap that we need. So off comes the fork clamp because it's got grease on it. I'm going to put that on some cardboard over here. I'm going to slide that over as far as we can. Okay, we're at the end of the line there. Oh, there we go. And we'll deal with that later. And the selector control. Now, nope, we got quite a bit of a gap here. So we will have to take both sides off. <laughs> Proves to that they, there's no such thing as a shortcut. Got to do it the hard way. So this comes off. Now I'm curious. The letters are oriented correctly here. The ready appears to be inked on forward towards the front. I just want to make sure. And with everything just loose, I'm going to take a look at that. Okay, that looks good. I, now I see what they've done. This is going to be a four-finger trigger, or your forefinger, that is, not four fingers. So that's how that trigger will be activated. you got a little thumb switch on the back and a rocker switch on the top. Now we can put our throttle back into place. So again, giving us some slack. I'm just watching which direction the wires are going. And now we do everything in reverse again. So kind of like what we started. 
And where's that white line going? Good. That'll do fine for now. We'll put the clamps back into place. And as we know, these clamps are not marked left or right or up or down. We still got our grease in there protecting everything. Spin these guys down with a six millimeter Allen key. And I'm just spinning them down loosely. So I'm going to center the bar. And I'm going to roll the bar into an angle that's kind of a neutral position. So just a little bit of slack there. We got our little laser etched marks for centering the bar. I'm just going to center that. I'm going to roll the bar forward. That seems to be a nice neutral position and flat. And again, you're going to see these things want to wiggle around. So just be mindful. Take your time. Pinch one down. Pinch the other down with a little bit of force. That's looking good. Now I'll just give a little bit of torque onto that. All right, much better. So, going back to what where we started, we're going to put this with this in this position here. So the little screw that we loosened earlier is going to be towards the brake lever, and that'll allow all of these switches to be in the right location that in the first attempt that we did, we got them on just a little bit off center or off position. I saw a bolt fall down. I think you put, you put this backwards before, no? Yes, I did put this on oh, backwards okay. before. Yeah. So now we've corrected that. All right. This is the very first time that I've been able to put eyes and hands on one of these guys. All right. Throttle bottomed out onto the bar, spin down the throttle clamp bolts. And again, you'll see I'm just spinning with my fingertips. I'm not putting my elbow into it for full torque. I like that. This selector or this switch over here, it'll kind of be a personal choice as to where you like it. And I'm just going to look at the way. So you'll see a little bump here. So if I put it up here, the bump will interfere with it. If I move it forward, the bump will allow this, this switch here to move. It appears that they've given a bit of a notch. So I'm going to make sure I'm clear of that. And there's our clamping bolt or screw. We'll lock it into position. Space is there. This is snug. And again, just a little bit more torque. I like it. Now we're going to put the brake levers into a decent position. So we're going to move them as far inboard as we can using, using an eight millimeter combination wrench. I am going to snug that one down. Snug that one down. I see a gap on the top, a bigger gap I can feel on the bottom. So I'm just going to loosen this one off a tiny bit just because I like those gaps to be equal on both sides. From the side, I'm going to just sort of judge the lever. Usually I like it when you're, when you reach for the bar, the brake free lever is just below the fingertips so that you can activate the brake. Also the throttle will have a flat spot on the front of it here, allowing room for the brake to move all the way inboard. This brake here has a lot of room in this area. So I think this is a much more forgiving design. You can have a little bit more room to sort of move it around. And I think that also might translate in the event of a crash and this lever spins around on you, it won't lock against the throttle. So I don't know if that's ever happened to the other Suron X riders. But if it did, it probably was the lever moving down and was banging into the, into the throttle. So you'd have to rotate the lever back. I'm going to move over to the other side. And I'm going to... 
So we're going to tighten this into position. Two and a half millimeter Allen key. I'm just looking at the other side. And again, we got some controls over here for the ASR and the lights. And I'm just thinking, I kind of like the idea just for style points and balance. I'm going to use, I'm going to set the rocker switches at the same angles. And okay, I see the flat spot for the brake lever. I'm going to rotate this up so the flat spot has a lot of room for this brake lever to go through its range of travel. I'm going to snug that down. And I'm going to set the brake lever at the same angle as it is on the other side. We like everything to be symmetrical. You may have a personal choice of changing that. I don't know why, but you might. I just want that little gap there that I see. All right. Now, one of the things I just sort of do is I stand behind the bike and I'm looking at the tip of this lever and I see it's just over the grip. I look over here, the tip of this one's up a little high. So I'm just going to roll it down. That bolt seems to be a bit tight to do that maneuver. Roll that down and they look equal. I like that. We'll snug that down. And because I move the lever once again, I just want to make sure it's not going to crash into any of the hardware here. And we can see it's moving clearly or freely. And if you were to look down inside here, you'll see that the lever is not going to touch this body here. That's got a nice feel. Mm -hmm. That one, this one here is not snapping back, but I think it's just the way the bike is set up on the, on the stand here. Now, this is a bike. I think we've pretty much completed everything, but there's a few accessories we're going to put on to finish the bike off now. The hand fenders. All righty. Crack open this box. All right. First thing's a chain guard. Chain guard, yeah. There you go. And then here are the here hand are fenders. Hand, hand guards. guards, yeah. So these will definitely be left and right. Yeah. Here's the second one. Mm -hmm. Then you got your you got your owner's manual package. Yeah, let's take a look inside here, anyways. But yeah, it's pretty. I got your cereal here. Packing list and quick installation guide you got inside here, and that's pretty much it. Then here you can, I guess, uh, put other tools or or owner whatever whatever you want to use it for, really. <laughs> and then it's handy. A couple uh, and some reflectors. Some reflectors that would go on the fork. Mm -hmm. uh, on the sales floor, I tend not to put them on. I find they do nothing to make the bike look prettier. But in terms of uh, road legalities, you know, if you should have a necessity for them, we'll put them on. We'll take, we'll put them on and show you where they go. Diagnostic a, tool. Diagnostic tool. Very important tool to have. Yeah. That'll tell you what may be going on with your bike if, if issues come up. Mm -hmm. That's it. All right. Let's put the hand guards on, seeing as where we started off in that area. All right, so these hand guards, they're going to end up on these locations here on the front of the brake levers. You'll see some fancy hardware that's already been mounted. So we can remove that. And then these things will go in its place. And deciding which way to go. Let's see. So does it go this way? Does it go that way? I'm thinking it's looking better that way. Do they mark them left and right? They don't, actually. We got a six over here. Five over here. There we go. Let's grab that. I just did it here by hand, but the long way for sure. <laughs> Let me spin these guys off. I'm going to just try it this way. All right. She does want to fit. You're still getting some lower protection. Now. Yeah, this makes this makes more sense. That seems to make more sense. I do like it that way. If you put them on upside down, I think they're going to work fine. But looking at the way the lever is all set up, you got the same clearance on the top mm -hmm. and the bottom of the lever. Whereas in the other direction, there is a bit more of a, a closed gap. So let's do it this way. 
you can see by the effort that I'm torquing these down, you don't have to crank a lot of force into it. This is a plastic component, so we don't want to crush any of this material here. Moving to the other side. And there is a bit of a receiver hole that's the same shape as, as the piece that the bolts go through. So it helps you align this stuff. But this little metal plate in the back does want to pop away. Once you put a little bit of tension on it, she holds itself into place nicely. And the last bolt. Spin that down. And we're going to put a little bit of torque on it. That's nice. Next one. Give it just a tiny bit more. That's good. Feel the other one out, make sure it feels the same. Yeah, that's the same. All right. And then there is our chain protector. So that's going to go on the chain guard side or the chain side of the bike. Just a little plastic deflector. And if you want to come around the other side over here, yeah, Barry's already got the bolts starting to come out. And here we are again. We're going to do the same procedure we always do. Shoot a tiny dab of grease in there. Got a little bit of leverage. Okay. I see a bit of a shoulder on that bolt. Is that a washer or is that bolt actually cut and designed that way? Okay, that's nice. The bolt has a bit of a shoulder and that fits into these holes here. You'll see one of them is slightly oval and one of them is round. My suggestion would be to put the round one in first because I think the oval one will just give you some room to, for play. Hey Barry, if you want to shoot a little dab of grease into those holes. Sure. Okay. And a little bit there. We got one in, spin that down. You'll want that to go into the hole like that. So it's nice and flush. That shoulder also protects it from crushing the plastic. So that's kind of why they did that, th that design with that shoulder. So you wouldn't just squeeze these in and keep on cranking them. So essentially when the bolt is bottomed out to that shoulder, it will be snug and you won't be crushing that plastic in any way. So first we start with that, and we just torque them down. So we know we're not going to harm the plastic because the shoulder will protect you from that. So I just put a little bit of force there. Take this guy, crank that down. So it's bottomed out. And it's bottomed out in such a way that we're not squeezing or extruding the plastic in any way. Are we actually done? Now? Oh, wait a minute. We're not quite done. You got a couple of these shipping hooks. I suggest removing these. These are actually nicely made. Almost a shame they won't be useful, but they might be useful in the future when you're traveling with your bike. Yeah, you, you can, know, you strapping can use it, it for down. strapping for sure. That's what they did it for, so why not? So yeah, you can strap your bike to your truck bed or to your rack in your car. We'll throw those in the box for the customer. And he or she can keep those for the future. Mm -hmm. Are we ready now? Is this an, is this completely a bike or is it not? I believe uh, the look of it is done for sure, but I think we will have to probably connect the battery inside. All right. Yes, you're right. Well, let's venture into that part. So in order to do that, we will need the key, I believe. Mm -hmm. And be a knife for just to be cutters. respectful yeah. for the packaging. I don't like to just rip away at everything, but I'm sure you, you riders out there will be so anxious to get this bike doing. There'll be parts flying and plastic flying all over the garage. And you're thinking, oh, I just want to get on this. Remember, the battery isn't fully charged yet. So you'll want to charge the battery up full. So be patient. We have it mostly built now. 
all the accessories on. Now we just need to open up the battery sec battery compartment. So you'll use the, the, the key that they give you. And on the side, on the right side of the bike, you'll see a keyhole. And when you put your key in and you turn it, you're going to hear a little click that happens under the seat. The seat will lift up and then it'll slide backwards to reveal everything. Down here, you got some storage space that we never had before. The actual charger will fit into here. So you can bring the charger with you on the bike, on the trail, or however you want to transport it. You can also use this for keeping tools, water bottles, energy bars, an extra shirt if you can roll it up in there. So that gives you some cargo space. Removing the, the, the actual battery cover, we got a couple of steps here. So the levers were saying to pull these down first. Start with that. We've got two other levers that will rock her forward. I believe it's forward. Yep. And now, I believe, yep, there we go. Ta-da! We got our battery. Got a little suspension. Look at that, eh? <laughs> Just like your car, your hatchback. So here we go, we got our wires. Wow, look at those wires. You can jumpstart a truck with those. So we got some, some caps to protect everything, which is a nice touch. This is no longer using a circuit breaker like before, so that's all sort of been this taken care of. We hook up that. So those are power cables to the, to the motor. And then here's our main cable. You'll see a little arrow that lines up to a tiny little arrow down here. So we're just going to place that into position and you're going to see that it actually rotated and clicked. Let's see when I, what happens when I reverse that. If I pull up, nothing's going to happen. I rotate it a tiny bit, she's off. So there's the trick. Putting it on, you don't have to rotate it. You'll watch very carefully. Ta-da! She does that little rotation on you. So that makes it real easy. Here we got this cable coming this way. I'm just going to root it so that it's not going to get pinched by the lid. There's where you're gonna hook up your charger. So you got a, a rubber cap protecting that. The battery can be charged on or off the bike. But at this stage, we could have, before we hooked up these wires, we could have just lifted the battery out and removed it like the Suron X. In this case, we're just gonna leave it in. We're gonna close down the shop. Closing these guys. I believe it's a multi-step multi, multi -step procedure. Push that down. What might I be doing wrong? Start with that. Okay, that felt like it was clamping. So what I did is I push that forward. That's what it latches it into some kind of a latch below. And this will counter cantilever in. Now she's solid. Locked in place. What's this here? Let's take a look. Here's something I haven't seen before. Little tool strapped in. Little toolkit. So it's velcroed in. We open that up. Looky looky. Wow, holy mackerel, look at this. So you're gonna wanna be, you won't, you won't wanna do this in a space where you're gonna lose these parts, but this is gonna be handy should you need any trail repairs. So you've got a, a lever with two sockets that you can mount these tools into and use them any way you like. So it looks like they give you an assortment of Allen keys, a Phillips screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, and looks like four, five, six, seven millimeter Allen keys. So pretty much everything you needed on this bike. Is there another one hidden in here? Oh, we've got something else in here. Let's see what this surprise is. I believe that's going to be a spoke wrench. Let's take a look when we go down to the nipples. So if I go down here, no, she ain't a spoke wrench. Well, it's an eight millimeter. Well, the last eight millimeter I used was on the brake lever. And when I mentioned a possibility of crashing and rotating these levers, here's your chance of fixing that on the trail. You got a little small Allen key, which I guess these would also fit into, you know, into our little controls. So should you knock them loose, you can do that on the trail. These guys thought of everything. You are well covered. I think if you need anything more than these tools, you probably need a a mechanic and a doctor, and that'll be a fun day. 
Make sure you have video for that day. Share it on our site. We'll love to see it and share it with our other riders. Like I said, if you don't break it, you're not having enough fun with it. Now let's put all of these tools back in here. Oh, wait a minute. I was hiding a tool on you guys. This, I am pretty sure fits your spokes. Let's go back in here again. Looky, looky. So there you go. There's a spoke tool. I would recommend only experienced wheel builders or mechanics to use this tool. I wouldn't use this at random. If you've absolutely damaged your bike to the point where you have no choice but to somehow get your bike going, definitely tighten up your spokes if they're coming loose. If your wheel's bent out of true, you probably can't fix it. The wheel is very, very strong, so it'll take a lot of force to bend it. It won't be easy to bend it back. And we don't bend wheels, we replace rims or we replace wheels when they, when they end up with that kind of damage. It's a real nice touch that they gave you this. And there's another little Allen, uh, sorry, another little wrench on the other side. It happens to be a seven mil. Haven't figured out where that fits, but it's there anyways. They probably just picked a random wrench on the market and knew that the six would do the spokes and the seven would do everything else. Let's put that back in its little home. You know, a little Velcro strap here. We'll tuck that back in the place with the Suron logo facing up proudly. Tighten that down so she no rattle. So when we put the seat back on, or the battery cover, as we may cause it, call it, it's going to slide. So there's going to be a notch on the front of your seat, right here, which slides over this nub. And at the same time, this latch here will clip into the lock, and that will keep the seat from flopping around on you. So we slide it forward. All right. There, there it is. There it is. That's All the right. noise the sound you want to hear. And then let's see if we hear that click. No. no. Yeah, that was a click. There we go. Yeah, that's so now good. she's solid. That's good. She's ready to go. Let's take a look at the charger. So we got the Suron lithium charger for the first time. They got a printed box. Look at that. The charger's inside of here. You got two handles to lift it out with. Oh, nice. Cooling fan. So a nice cooling fan to keep it cooled. Processor inside that's an intelligent processor, knowing when the battery is being, as it's being charged, it'll fast charge, trickle charge, and balance your battery all at the same time. Cooling mm -hmm. fins to keep it cool. There's your indicator on the back, so it'll probably start out red. And she'll go to green. There'll probably be some flashing modes in between. Consult your manual for all the little directions on that. Yeah. And of course, your power supply cord that'll go to your AC outlet. We'll just plug that in the back, run that over to the AC, and you're rocking and rolling. So this you can carry under the seat in that in that in that compartment there, or you can leave it at home. Keep your bike a couple pounds lighter. That way, when you're doing knack knacks over the jumps, you got a little bit less swing weight on the bike. That's I think build. this pretty much concludes the build. This bike's ready to ride. So now that we got the bike fully built and assembled, let's power her up. Well, put the key in. We got power. She's alive. All right. Now, uh, since the bike is uh, elevated, we can actually check the throttle out. Uh, it won't go right now because uh, we have a new safety feature button here, the ready button which we didn't have with the LBX. So once you hit this button here, you're gonna see the green light here that says ready. And now we can rock and roll. Nice. The entire build, um, we were very informative. We went through it thoroughly. If you have any questions though, of course, you can comment below and we'll certainly help answer it and uh, with your build process. But again, I think we went over everything. Uh, Paul, thank you very much. That was very, very good as usual. Uh, if you like the video and this helps you out, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up, a like, and uh, subscribe for more future uh, videos, builds, rides, and more. Other than that, guys, me and Paul are signing off. We wish you an epic day or night. <laughs>